Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can make 2D characters knock back and hit each other inside of Unity 2022. So the first thing that's going to be important is to make sure that the characters you want those knockback forces to apply to to be rigid bodies set to body type dynamic. This allows forces to work inside of Unity out of the box. So in order to knock back a character, you would apply a certain amount of force in a certain direction as a force set to impulse mode. But for all that to work, your rigid bodies need to be set to dynamic. So for any enemy or player that you want that kind of physics to work on, dynamic is going to be the way to go. If you used kinematic, you'd basically be ignoring the Unity physics altogether and you'd have to be programming uh, your own ways to make that happen. Next, you need to create a damageable character script. I'm doing this actually as a separate component, not the main movement script for the slime. And you can see on the player, I have a player controller up here and a damageable character script down here. So the damageable character on the slime enemy and the player are actually the same as a separate component rather than cramming everything in one single script. So if we take a look at that script and I'm just going to be focusing on the hit, take damage and knockback parts of it for right now. You can see that, of course, like every other Unity script, it's a mono behavior, but we're also implementing a interface, iDamageable. So I created this interface because all of the characters in the game that move and get hit are going to have certain requirements. So an interface is a good way of defining those requirements. One of the advantages of using an interface and then declaring the properties or the methods that every class that implements the interface is going to have is that you don't need to implement the final class directly, but you can call methods on an iDamageable object, knowing that the final class will have all of these methods inside of it. So if I take a look at the slimes attack in my slime CS script, you can see void on collision enter 2D. So whenever you're using rigid body 2D physics inside of Unity, then this is the standard function you have to create and implement for when a collision happens. So Unity will already detect the collisions, and then you just need to find out what type of collision that is and do what you need to do to the collided object. So in this case, we have a collision. So I find the collider object by doing collision.collider. That gives us a collider 2D object. And any collider 2D object in Unity is going to be a game object. So you could just do get component and then that I damageable interface. So we just check, is there a script on the game object that implements I damageable. If so, then that's going to be stored here. And we could just make sure that's not null, confirming that the script has been implemented. And any functions on I damageable, we can call down here, such as on hit with damage and knockback. So if I look at I damageable, you can see I have two versions of this function, just one that does damage and then a overload of the function, which also includes knockback. So depending on what kind of damage is being dealt to the character, you can just call whichever function is needed. Uh, another alternative would just be if there is no knockback, you just add in uh, vector 2.0 as the knockback parameter, and then just ignore the knockback if there's no real direction or value to that. So once again, to go over this, you check if the component exists, and then you apply your damage and knockback to the component, which will be the final version implemented on damageable character. So here you can see how I get the knockback vector, which is just calculating the direction between the collided object, the, posi the transform position of it in the game world, minus the transform position of the slime character, the object damaging the object. And then if you normalize the vector, you get a direction. So you multiply the direction times the knockback force. So that knockback force is just any arbitrary variable up here. You can see I'm defaulting to it 100 units, but really it's just something you're going to scale up and down depending on how far you want to knock back whatever's being damaged. So we pass through that knockback direction into the unhit function with the damage amount. The damage just simply being a flow or integer damage amount. Very simple. And then so we're calling the unhit implemented in damageable character. So then if we go in here and we take a look at the script, once again, you'll see I have two versions here, one that just does damage and one that does damage in a knockback. So in my script, a character can be invincible. So just making sure it's not invincible so it can take the damage in the knockback and then applying the damage to the health. This is a property. I'll explain more about why I'm doing that in a second. And then to actually do the knockback, you do rigid body add force. So this is going to be the rigid body on the damaged character, right? And we're applying a force, which is going to include the direction and the magnitude combined in this knockback vector two. 
and we're adding the force as an impulse because this is an instantaneous force it's happening at one frame in the game it's not spread out over uh multiple frames which is what you would generally use the default force mode 2d dot force for more like if a character was consistently pushing a ball and then this part here when a character gets damaged it would activate an invincibility timer but once again that's totally optional so here is your knockback rigid body add force the knockback amount and direction as an impulse so then i can quickly show the health property up here so we subtract the damage from the health which is going to give us a new value here so the new value is the new health value and i'm checking is that lower than the current health value so if the new value is lower then obviously the character took damage so I'm telling the animator to play the hit animation with this set trigger hit. And I'm also spawning an instance of damage text right above the character right here. So when I apply a new value to the property, it does update the variable here with the new value. But it also just triggers some other stuff to happen every time we change the property here. So if you know that when a new value is set on a property like health, you can just have certain bits of code run every single time if that's something you need for your game. Otherwise, you would make this a separate function and then just do health equals value and then call that separate function whenever you change the health value. So you can just see here that the, the main thing that really matters here for this tutorial is just that you make sure you update the health value after taking damage on the character. And then the other bit here is just that you add the force to the rigid body of the character. So that's the knockback direction times the force as impulse. And so that gives us our result where we can apply that force, apply that damage. And we're also playing the hit animation, which includes the color change and uh, the actual changing of the sprites. There you can see when they get hit, they have like a little jump there. And all of that is possible by just calling the on hit function on the I damageable and then just creating an implementation of it. So once again, another point is that the damageable player has the exact same code right here in this damageable character script. So the player can still get hit and knock back, but it works a little differently on the player because it has the movement going on and probably the settings on the rigid body are a little different as well, but it's calling the same functions. So basically right now, the slimes are indiscriminately hitting the other slimes or the player. There's a strong chance you probably don't want one enemy to be able to damage everything else in the game that is a damageable character. So there would be a few ways of handling that, such as messing around with the physics layers, which you can do in uh, edit project settings, and then down here, physics 2D layer collision matrix. Let me open that. And then just changing which layers can interact with which other layers. And you can create one for player, you can create one for enemies, and then just make it so that enemies can't hit other enemies by unchecking it there. And then making sure that, of course, the um, enemies are on a enemy layer up here where you, the layer dropdown is. But um, more in line with this tutorial uh, would be if you go into slime, rather than checking for an eye damageable you can check for a specific implementation of the eye damageable so that would be creating let's say a player damageable class or an enemy damageable class what you could do really simply is just to extend this damageable character if you know that the players and the enemies are going to up to this point work exactly the same then what we could do here just add another script or click on character new file let's call this enemy.cs and then we just need to extend from damageable character so this is just basic c sharp inheritance public class enemy extends from damageable character and we don't actually need to write anything else than this as long as we have that new identifying class of enemy it works exactly like a damageable character but if we check in slime for an enemy rather than an i damageable uh, then it will ignore anything that isn't an enemy even if it has the exact same implementation of on hit down here. So let's change this real quick. I'm going to change this to enemy, enemy here. Probably going to get some errors because I need to uh, refresh the classes inside of Unity. So click on Unity so that it can add that new script in. Okay, now back in here, you can see it recognizes the enemy class. So uh, this is of type enemy. So when we actually use damageable, it's doing enemy dot on hit which, as you know, is exactly the same as damageable character on hit. So we don't actually need to change the code at all. All we need to do is uh, change which script is being added to these slimes. So I'm going to 
jump into the prefab for the slime. Let's remove damageable character here. Click remove component. Add a new component enemy. Now we do need to add in the health text game object. So if I remember, that is a prefab in my project. So I'm just going to drag that in. So this will spawn a copy of this text above the character. So let's hit play. And they should still be able to take damage like before. Works exactly the same. But when it chases the player, you can see the player cannot be hit. It can take damage. And that's because the player is not a type of enemy. So that is uh, one way that you can filter out what your enemies or your players can damage. Uh, likewise, you might want the player to not be able to swing at an NPC. That kind of thing. And hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you guys. So uh, another thing, this eye damageable here. You don't have to extend everything from damageable character like I did here. Another way you can handle this is that you just create different classes of eye damageable. So maybe your enemy doesn't inherit from damageable character, but it just implements the eye damageable interface instead. So this is useful if you have different implementations for it. So I'm just going to implement the interface with all of the properties and the functions that need to be written. And then you just customize this to wherever your needs are. But because of the interface, it's going to guarantee that we have those same properties and those same methods that are written or defined in a damageable interface. So I hope all of this is making sense to you guys. When I was putting together this scene, I did some very long videos uh, on the subject, putting everything in the scene together, the player, the enemy, the animations, all of that. So if you want to see more about how all that was set up, you can check the cards of the video or the links in the description, which will send you to those videos as well. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.